Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Cats. We are playing some more Roman's Christmas and hopefully today on this stream I will finish the game. Uh, that was a little opening for those YouTube people. Uh, what happened last time was... Uh, what did happen last time? The guy who we tied up in the basement escaped his ropes and killed someone who he thought was someone else and he was very happy that he finally killed the person who he was trying to kill. And then uh, we caught him saying the wrong person, the wrong dead person's name, and we're like, "Oh!" So we found out that it was him, and he had escaped his ropes. Um, uh, day five twenty seven, December twelve eighty five. Even though I slept all night and just took a nap, I still feel drowsy. But fortunately, I think my nose is clearing up. Maybe I can smell something now. I got up. My entire body felt sore and stiff all over. I'll just go downstairs anyway. The smell of stewed meat filled the corridor. Probably best not to think about what kind of meat it is. You finally woke up. Seeing me come downstairs, Sarzen picked up a tray and came to me. Look, I'm sorry for suspecting you. I apologize for that. He took the soup bowl from the tray and set it before me. Bon appetit. The stewed meat in the bowl was piled up like a hill, higher than the edges of the bowl. Even the soup looked really looked ready to spill over the edge. If nothing else, Sarge's apology was straightforward. Although I'm pretty sure I saw his thumb dip into the soup when he passed it to me. I took a spoon and shoveled some soft overcooked meat straight into my mouth. Seems that, seems that the snow kept the horse meat cold enough to store, which might have explained why it still tasted fresh. It's not exactly good, but it's better than nothing. Yeah, there was horses that brought some people here, but the horses died in the cold. I'm taking, to te I'm tempted to take another nap after eating, but there's more important things to do than sleep. It seems that Elkin's job was directly relevant to Vincel's motive for committing the crime. I need to ask her about that, and thank her for saving him as well. As for Vincel's true target, it was Vincel's true target. It was Heron, who is my least favorite character, who I've wanted to die since he arrived in the game, and I was like, well, I hope he dies. And no, everybody's been dying around him because someone was trying to kill him that they were essentially missing. Ugh. Vincel's true target must have been Heron. I should ask her face to face when I have time. Oh, she's literally right there. Let's talk to Thrivey first, though. I sat by Thrivey, who was still reading his giant book. Do you think Heron is the friar? Do you think Heron is the friar who framed Vincel and his brother? Should be. You already have the answer, right? Yeah. Do you think he'll be back to take his revenge? Huh? Isn't he dead? Thrivey nodded. Didn't expect you to believe in ghosts. At this point, anything seems possible. Even the impossible. What What about Vincel's uh, nyctalopia? Could you, uh, could you explain it to me? It's mostly conjecture. If he was really night blind, then he must have been a picky eater for a long time. Not eating guts for only a few days not eating guts for only a few days won't weaken your eyesight. What exactly was the poison he drank? It was cyanide. Ah. Judging from its smell, it was likely apple seed extract and a bit of juice, with maybe some flaxseed as well. How could apples be poisonous? If they are, why would anyone drink cider? Apples themselves are not, but their seeds are. If you collect enough seeds, you can extract a strong poison from them. I'm doomed. I've chewed a lot of apple seeds. Aren't they too bitter to chew? I'm too lazy to spit them out. <laughs> I thought- okay, so originally I thought that the game changes uh, depending on your actions and like who you talk to in what order, because there were some scenes that I swear that I saw happen with other characters. But I think I was just wrong about that, and I was just, uh, I was just interpreting, like, little glimpses that I saw of the game incorrectly. Because I saw another scene, uh, show up, and it was actually with a different character than the one that I thought it was. Like, I thought there was a scene where you, as the main character, like, slept with the shark character. Uh, but that's a scene that they show after, uh, the shark character dies. Um, and they show it with, uh, with the character who killed him. Uh, who just happens to look like your character, kind of. Anyway. Let me uh, talk to Elegant because she's right here. I sat opposite from Elegant and her tail seemed to swirl under her robe. 
So one quick question. Speak. This job of yours? I had not even started investigating, but I see no need to now. Huh? My client just died after I accused him of murder. You mean Vincel? Yes, he was a client who hired me to investigate the incident in Saint, at St. Isaac, though his real intent was likely to find his target. But he was stuck in the White Star because of the snowstorm before I could begin my investigation and found Heron, the friar from that day, among the lodgers. What a coincidence. So the friar Vincel mentioned really is Heron. Maybe you should ask him yourself? And what now? Thank you for believing in me. But you're welcome. Trust is a two-way path. Who should I talk to? Let's, uh, well, I guess I should go find Heron, huh? Heron was kneeling by the window with a thigh cross, muttering something fervently. That is the Phi symbol, right? I, I already forgot what this is. I've been calling it the Phi symbol this whole time. Wait till he finish. Our father, I was formed in evil, and in sin did my mother give me birth. I confess my sins on my hand, feet, tongue, and eyes, and thoughts to you and your angels. May your punishment... I'd better wait for him. Hello. I'm streaming this game where everybody is dying, and I'm very upset. <laughs> um, let, me, let me wait until he finishes. Flog my hands so that I may give salvation to those in need. Flog my feet so that I may walk on the thorny road to preach your gospel. Well, he has a lot to say. I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna be nice. I don't like him, but... Let me, let me go talk to someone else while he's doing that. Who else is alive? Uh, Solar's alive, right? <laughs> Let's talk to her. What do you plan on doing after the snowstorm? Return home early so I can confess. Is she planning on traveling to Cordova overnight? Well, you're doing the right thing. I was afraid that you were planning to run away, but now it seems that I'm just being paranoid. Huh? It caused a lot of trouble for you for the rest of the for the rest of us if you did. Why why would I What if Heron truly is the friar whom Vincel mentioned? He couldn't be. Surely someone as devout as him wouldn't be mixed up in such business. Because you haven't seen how it gets when he's drunk. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to doubt you, but the way the scene was set up deceived me. It's not your fault. Honestly, there was a moment even I suspected myself. I won't doubt others that easily anymore. That might be overdoing it, but it never hurts to be cautious. Okay, well... I guess the last person is... What is Anzox doing in the kitchen? Anzox is busy washing dishes in the kitchen. Oh, well there you go. He's clearly not good at this, yet he's not bad enough to break plates. Anzox? Uh, hold on. He rubbed up some soup, some soup in the plate with his soft paw pad, dripped, dripped it into the water, then rubbed his claws on his trousers. Do dragons have paw pads? This is a very important question. Do dragons have paw pads? I feel like they wouldn't, right? Like, I guess like lizards kind of have paw pads. Thank God I never touched his pants. So what's up? about Sergeant? Why are you doing this? Sergeant said he needed a break. He must be utterly exhausted by all these incidents. Anzox put the bowls and plate plates aside, grabbed a chunk of meat, and began to cut at it. About this too. Can't believe Sergeant trusts you enough to cook in this kitchen. Even Kane wasn't allowed in here most of the time. It's, uh, it's less of a matter of trust and more than I volunteered. He's just tired. Anzox trimmed the fat on the meat, then cut the rest into small pieces and threw them into the stew pot. Do you cook often? I have to say, you look like you know your way around a kitchen. Never in the White Star, but other tavern keepers sometimes ask me to do chores when I can't sink for supper. Don't expect much, though. As long as you don't serve me something cold or burned, I won't ask for more. If all my diners have such underwhelming expectations, then I may have, may have found a new calling. Your hands aren't shaking anymore. 
I hope you fully recovered. I do hope so, too. Uh, though lately I've had a f quite a few odd dreams. N not that I'm complaining, my dreams are far better than the stories I made up when I'm awake. Does writing down your dreams count as stealing your own work? So do you think Heron really is the friar Vincel mentioned? I'm not so sure. But if he is the one who ruined Vincel's life, then I'm going to smash his head in with my loot. Hey, that's a little extreme. He looks like he's going to cook some meat for dinner. Sarsen must be really tired. He'd never allow Anzox in his kitchen unless he was desperate. Um, in that case, I feel like I shouldn't bother. No one's in the attic. Wait, where is he then? <laughs> what are you doing in the cellar? Go to bed. <laughs> if you're tired, go to bed. Sarsen leaned on the barrel with a half cup of cider in his hand. This is the first time I've seen him drinking. Huh? Why'd you <clears throat> come down here? Oh, I didn't expect to be this hazy by the first cup. That explains why he never drinks. Anzox cooking? Seriously? He, he's, uh, he's better at it than you. It's demand, it's demand a tough job. I cook for myself all the time. Pup, it's not, it's not cooking if you only cook for yourself. Will you still keep this tavern open after everything's over? Uh, I don't know. What? You're not telling me you're, that you quit. Where would I find cider as good as yours? If I can live till the snow stops. I'm pretty sure that only a lunatic would pick you as a target. How long will the snow keep falling? We're running out of water. Thank God we have some clean snow, so that'll help. It snowed all four days. It must have an end. For a while there, I thought you would execute me. <laughs> he did. <laughs> I got a bad end at one point. Whoa, what are you talking about? How would I ever think of you as a murderer? Okay, maybe I did just for a second. Okay, now I'm gonna interrupt Heron. Yep, yep, yep. Let's do one more. Flog my tongue so that I may cherish every time I sing your praises. He's still there. I'm wondering. I'm wonder. I'm starting to wonder if this is gonna last until next Christmas. Our Father, grant mercy upon my soul, for my body is sinned. Our Father, give mercy on my soul, because the sin has been made has been made manifest. May Almighty you forgive my sins and... Knock knock. Sorry for bothering you. Uh, detective, I didn't see you there. Sorry. That's not the voice that I gave him. <laughs> Heron turned his head towards me. The, the corner of his eyes was streaked down onto his cheeks. My sins are unforgivable. I guess he really is penitent. But... I have paid for my crimes. Paid? Did someone smash your head in with a loot? <laughs> I have resolved to pay to pray more devoutly in order to make good the sins of my youth to God. What about this what about your sins towards others? God will ease their misfortune and salve their wounds. That's not what you said when you exchanged rooms with Peter. This is different. I can do good works within the teachings of God, but I see now that I don't have the power to carry out his ineffable plan. So what are you going to do then? Keep praying and- oh, wow, wow, why did I go into the stars in there? <laughs> so what are you going to do then? Keep praying and hope a miracle happens? I will keep praying, and when it is time, God will, God will grant me a revelation. Which is a fine way of saying, do nothing useful. Okay. Wait, that's all he's gonna tell me? Oh my god, is he praying again? Alright, fine. Uh, the light died down outside the window, and the flames dance on the pine logs in the fireplace. The smell of stewed meat from the kitchen is making me feel hungry. Anzok's cooking skills are better than I thought. Um, let's... But I haven't gotten enough clues yet. <laughs> clues? 
I just want to see if Elegant has anything new to say. Little Friar. Noble brother. I can't believe Vincel was one of the noble brothers. Maybe it was fate, or coincidence, or just bad luck. But it would be hard to convince others with his gloves. It would be hard to convince others with just his gloves and his lost little finger. Starting from scratch in an unfamiliar city, I must admit, that is actually quite impressive. Well, he can certainly distinguish different sp spices since he was once a noble. I can't believe someone as clever as him killed two innocent people and still missed his target. Not everyone has a talent for the art of murder. Well, he killed one innocent person. He, uh, missed the other. Alright. Let's, uh, let's get some food. I sat at the table next to the fireplace. Bon appetit! Anzox put the bowl on the table with his loot in another hand. Why are you still holding your loot? <laughs> Would you care for some music during din dinner? I think I'll pass. Anzox too is actually not bad. Even Sergeant came out of the cellar and, and ate some. Then again, he could just be too drunk to care. Uh, it, like this, this is. It did a different chapter, so I, I'm like, someone else is going to die, and I'm afraid of who it's gonna be. I, I'm tired of everyone dying. I don't even know who can die anymore. Honestly, the two characters that I see the most expendable, quote-unquote expendable, would be Heron himself and Solar. Um, and, like, I guess they could, like, the thing is, this is this is probably going to be the last murder. I hope. Jeez. I hope they don't move to, to another one. I'm so tired of people dying. Um, but if this is the last murder, then there's a chance that they're going to do someone, like someone more important. That's what worries me the most. Dinner just peacefully passed and Sergeant began to sober up. Ugh, I didn't expect my cider to be so strong. Just a single cup almost knocked me over. I think it's all about your tolerance level. So that's why I never saw you drink. You're a lightweight. I'm not. And here I thought a mighty specimen could handle a teensy bit of cider. One more word out of you, and I'll start charging you for your bed. Please, no, have mercy. Wait, how do you test the quality if you don't drink it? That's what you guys are for. Huh? Oh. So, every winter you give us free cider. You're doing experiments on us. Uh, I get some I get some knowledgeable drunkards to test my cider, and you get free cider. It's a win-win. So, do we still need a watchman tonight, or should we just... I better not mention it, since I'm the one who fell asleep during my watch. Well, I'll do it. Heron, who had kept silent the whole meal, suddenly interrupted me. I... I'm going to prove that no matter what I was before, I've changed. That I now walk the right path under the guidance of God. But... Maybe the paranoia talking, but I couldn't help but consider the possibility that Heron might, sla that might slaughter us all when we slept. Anzox twitched. Seems like I wasn't the only person thinking that. Thank you. I know it's not exactly easy. I was intending to be the Watchman, but I'm afraid at this point I'd fall asleep. I thought Sergeant just glanced at me. Thanks. I hope you all can trust me, for although I was tempted by the devil a long time ago, I have rid myself of all sin with God's guidance. Oops. Thrivey got up in a hurry and rescued his book from his spilt cider. The overturned cup rolled into a smooth arc across the table, causing cider to drip down the edge of the table. That was the sound of glass breaking, but there's no glass here. <laughs> I mean, the, the bottles, I guess, of cider have glass in it, but it just says that he spilled his cup, which is made of wood. <laughs> oh, but okay. Bless it all. Sorry for interrupting. I have to deal with this. Thrivey quickly ran upstairs with a cup of water. He even tried to take the steps two or three at a time, but stumbled and said, Such a precious man, he screamed. It seems the good doctor is rather unlucky. <laughs> More than just him, it seems. Everyone in this tavern's incurred bad luck this, these days. Yeah. 
The sergeant hung his head and rested his elbows at the, on the table, his claws on his snout. The snowfall seems lighter now. Maybe by morning. Don't say it. Such things won't come to if you speak speak them aloud. Uh, all right. I didn't expect so large to, so large to believe that kind of stuff. I had a secret friend once. She taught me many things like this. Secret friend. It was in my childhood. Once a month, father used to give me a basket of flowers which he had collected from his garden and sent me to sell them at the market. Once I was selling pomegranate flowers at, to an alchemist who sold love potions at the fair. She bought me a handful of flowers and passed them to her daughter. That's how we met each other. Since then, I went to find her every fair day. And on those days, I would show her what I learned in my etiquette lessons, and she would teach me things. How to make simple potions, how to avoid bad luck, and the creation of towns. You know, Cain would have gone along well with Solar if, he only if he'd only became their cook. Then? Then I heard her, money, her mother was burnt as a witch, and so, she, so was she. <laughs> Sergeant, come on. Sergeant's head slipped from his spot, and he began snoring softly. Oh dear. It seems even he has li his limits. Elegant got up and walked past Sergeant. She paused and gently touched his shoulder, but continued on without waking him. I think I'll go back to my room and get some sleep. Good night, everyone. Are you following me? Is there something you want to talk about in private? Well, I just wanted to get, get your opinion before I went to bed. Will it happen again among the rest of us? According to what information I have collected, the rest of the lodgers were total strangers before they came here. Sarzan and Anzox knew each other a long time ago, but they've never had problems before. So there should be no further problems, so maybe you should be careful. What? No such thing as too much caution if you have dirt on someone. If you're talking about Solar, I've spoken to her, there shouldn't be any problems with her. Not just her. Do you mean... Elegant glanced at the staircase, then rose up on her toes and whispered in my ear. Hold on, not that one. I'm half deaf, remember? Sorry, my mistake. <laughs> I turned around and listened to her whisper in the other ear. Heron. Seriously? He swore he's repented. Just as, I believe, Lunique swore he would be faithful to Solar at their wedding. And all of those who offer to keep vigil at night these days tend to, well, no offense. Good point. Well then, I wish you a good night, Roman. Good night, Elegant. I locked the door and bolted the window. Like Elegant said, no such thing as too much caution. Maybe tonight I could sleep peacefully. I hope. I couldn't be more familiar with the taste of snow. Salty taste like rusted iron, cruelly overwhelming all of their tastes. Does snow taste like iron? <laughs> snow doesn't taste like. I mean, I guess snow is cold enough that it like gives you the taste of cold, which is kind of like what you would taste with iron. From the first snow of winter to the last one in spring, I won't miss any of them. Okay. Oh, you're thinking you're, you're tough? Come on, get up. Is that all you got? Did you break your leg or something? Move, you idiot. Oh shit, it's really broken. Stop standing standing there like an idiot. Run! But what about him? Are we just going to leave him here? We don't have time. Just go. That day, there was heavy snow as well. That day, he was there as well. Uh-oh. Day 6, 28 December 1285. I was awakened by a loud, heavy pounding on my door. Roman! What ha- Sergeant grabbed my wrist as I opened the door and dragged me downstairs without a word. Hold on, hold on, what happened? The lobby was filled with a scent of booze and a dozen or so empty cups were piled up by the counter. Heron was bent over the counter with a half cup of cider in his hand. Well, I'm glad at least it was Heron. <laughs> Took long enough. Is he drunk? Just as I wanted to con condemn Heron for drowning himself in cider and abandoning his duty, a familiar smell just barely masked by the alcohol, caught my attention. Blood. Heron's pupils were empty and enormously di dilated. The silver five cross was stained with dark red spots. The back of Heron's head was black, not from black-colored fur, but dark, congealed blood. The smell of blood and cider filled the, filled the air of the hall, like it was trying to seep into the carpet and the bricks of the walls. Heron. It had to happen eventually. Eventually? He escaped from Vincel twice, but I guess third time's a charm. 
Don't blame this on a ghost. Look how many people are still left in my tavern. Only six, and only of those six, and, and one of these six only lives because we can't touch her. No matter who the murderer is, I can't... I can't take this anymore. But, stop investigating. I... I'm so tired of people dying. Besides, Heron wasn't exactly innocent. The thing that gets me is... The two people... The two people who I think are the most likely to have done this are Anzox and Sarzin himself. And I don't want it to be Sarzin. I don't, but I feel like I need to continue searching. I'm gonna save real quick, I'm gonna save. I know Heron did something unforgivable, but it doesn't matter what his past sins were. Execution without judgment is not allowed. That's why I want to keep investigating, but I'll respect what I'll respect whatever you decide, certainly. I'll go find Thrivey to do the autopsy. Thank you. Sarzan passed, passed me the keys and hurried upstairs. Using stand power. <laughs> well, again, at least it was Heron. Heron was my least favorite character. I mean, if Heron died first, then none of this would have happened. And everything would have been great. Well, no, the first two characters would have died still. But if Heron died first, then none of this would have happened. That would be great. <laughs> we would have all been happy living our lives. <laughs> Heron's body's leaving over under the counter, staring into the distance with a vacant expression. Better not do anything before Thrivey has a chance to examine it. Not that, n n it's not that I can't do an examination myself, but it's better to have a professional physician do it instead. The mug in Heron's hand is half full. Several empty mugs piled on the counter. Sergeant didn't even light. Sergeant didn't even light the fire in the kitchen. What? Then why is it lighting? I think it's important for me to notice that there's a lot of mugs over there. A cup. A cup. What's taking Thrivey so long to come downstairs? Sorry for making you wait so long. We just got ready. It's okay. I'll go take a look somewhere else. Thrivey rubbed his eyes with his sleeve and covered up his mouth to hide his yawn. Sorry for waking you up this early. It's okay. This is my job. I kind of want to go to the attic and, uh... Talk to Anzox. What time did you go to sleep? Anzox had his loot on his knees and was wiping it with a cloth. Very sus, Anzox. I suddenly noticed that some of the varnish was missing from the back from the back of his loot. Anzox? What? What happened to you at the back of your loot? It's just a little dinged up. Did it hit something? I I must have accidentally scratched it on the banister. He turned the loot towards him to hide the damage. Suddenly a tiny glass glass bottle dropped out of the loot's sound hole and onto his thigh. Anzox covered the bottle with his paw and tried to slip it back into the sound hole. What is that? What's what? Don't pretend, you know I saw it. Fine. Anzox lifted the loop by the neck and shook it until the bottle fell into his palm. It looked like it was half full of a dark liquid. It's just some belladonna juice I got a long time ago. I take a few drops when I need some uh, inspiration. What is belladonna juice? Uh... According to Anzox, he took half the juice and didn't use it to poison Heron. He didn't say that, but okay. Sarsen. So what are you going to do with the White Star after all this? What am I supposed to do? Keep keep running it, of course. After all this, you don't think customers might think? Who knows? Not like I'm a god or something. All I can do is keep this tavern running. Sure, the atmosphere might never be the same, but it's better than just closing up shop for good. What did you do last night? When I went upstairs last night, there were a few. There were still a few people in the hall. I checked every door to make sure they were all locked. Then I went upstairs. Then I went to, up to the attic to sleep. Uh, who was in the hall when you went upstairs? Uh, let me think. Heron, of course. He was on night watch. And Anzox was playing his loot by the fireplace. Then, I guess he was worried that he may become 
unfamiliar with his loot due, his, due to the coma. Solar, too, she didn't want to go back to her room yet, so she stayed in the, ho in the hall to listen to Anzox's music. That's all. Okay. Well, let's go talk to Solar. She's not here. A cup. Huh, why is she not here? Is Elegant in her room? Can I search the notebook? No more change with the, these names. Looks like Elegant finally learned some lessons. Oh, there she is. What do you plan on doing after the snowstorm? We him home early, early so I can confess. Oh. what? That's what she said last time, wasn't it? Case conjecture, okay. What do you think happened last night? It may sound strange if I say it aloud, but I think Heron was killed by Vintel's ghost. How is that possible? An old friend of mine told me that if someone died with strong resentment, they would linger on in this world as a spirit until they get what they want. Let's make something clear. Usually we don't take ghosts into consideration if we still have living people as suspects. It's probably going to give me the option to... Okay, I just wanted to make sure that she was in my room. Oh, actually... Uh, check case notes. Yes, again. For some reason, after you read it the first time, it turns back into Chinese. Uh, and then I'll check the evidence again. Search. Chopping knife on cutting board. Nothing in the pot. Nothing in the pot. Well, he got his ham knife back. <laughs> so I just washed the ham knife and put it back. Uh, good to know that we won't. We don't have any ham now. The stored water ran out, so Sergeant put put the snow in, put snow in the bucket. We could use it as clean water when it melts. Oof, that's scary. Being completely out of water, you only have snow. I don't need to use the bathroom right now. Can I do my hair? Look at me, I'm so handsome. I really need to get my hair cut after the snow. <laughs> do I guess? Yeah, I guess people do have hair in this world. Not everyone, but people. Some, some people do. A cup. The dung. The dung. <laughs> the door swung open before I entered the key into the keyhole. Weird. Uh, wait, no, that's not what she said. Is that? That's not how you spell weird, right? I before E except for C. But uh, uh, except words. That weird is W E I R D. Yes. <laughs> Whatever. What's going on? Do you usually lock a door after an inve after investigating a room? Of course. Why? The door to Vincel's room, uh, the door to the room Vincel stayed in, was open this morning. Hmm. Perhaps someone opened this door in order to convince us that his ghost took revenge. Last night. Wait. Why am I bothering to ask? I went upstairs with you, then I went back to my room and slept. The window must have been open for a long time since there's so much snow on the sill. It seems to have been open the whole night. Sergeant said he made sure that all the guest rooms were all locked. Could it have been open this morning? Or perhaps he searched here and forgot to lock the door? This is the first time I've set foot in Vincel's room today. If anything, I thought you picked the lock to get inside. Well, there's not that many people to talk to, so at least that makes this shorter. Wait, hold on. Actually, I'll talk about all of that later. Uh, search. Please wait a second, I'm still examining him. I'll go check. Oh, wait, I finished. Huh? That's faster than I thought. <laughs> well, it seems to have been pretty simple this time. Okay. go. His eyes are bloodshot. There's blood on the back of his head. I looked close and it wasn't caused by a sharp weapon. He bled a lot, though. It wasn't fatal. Like Ensox. 
So was he poisoned? Aaron's pupils are dilated. His face looks purple from suffocation. I've prepared an autopsy report for you. If ask if you don't understand. Thanks. Yeah. The mug in Heron's hand is half full. Ah, better not touch that. Why? I think that cider is poisoned, though I'm not positive. That's just my assumption after examining the body. Okay, well... So it was Anzox. <laughs> and... Wait, it might be Anzox and Sarzin. Which worries me. A lot. Because that means they're working together to cover up the murder. Anzox might have tried to murder him, but it didn't completely kill him. And then... Uh, they po either poisoned him or Sarzin strangled him. Oh, that's tiring. That would explain why he didn't want to didn't want me to investigate this time. I should investigate the hall, but maybe there's something on the second floor too. Although not everyone can give useful testimonies, asking everyone is still necessary. I did. Uh, I wanted to check the autopsy report again. All right. Heron, male, hyena, around 30 years old. Body discovered half an hour ago, dead for about eight hours. The body was found bent over the counter with a cup in his hand. Rigor mortis has set in. A wound caused by a wound caused by blunt force trauma was located on the back of the skull, with obvious but not excessive bleeding. There's bruising on the face as well. The body's pupils were extremely dilated, and he shows he shows signs of anoxia. These symptoms suggest that the bot suggest that he was poisoned with belladonna. That's all I found. Then, go search elsewhere for yourself. I'm not the detective. Maybe I'll investigate the scene once more. It may give me hints about where to search. Poisoned with belladonna. Collect 42 belladonna berries during a full moon. Grind them with a half, grind them with a half an unpeeled lemon, then filter it to make a potion. Very small doses will cause euphoria, but any more will result in death by suffocation. Judging from his symptoms, I think he must have been poisoned. Such a coincidence. What? Anzox owns a bottle of belladonna, and the bottle's half full. Hmm. Well, what about your book? Is it still readable? Oh, it's fine. It's almost dry now. A Kybalion? Is that the name of the book? Thick book Thrivey owns. It was soaked inside her last night, but it's almost dry now. Why is that? Why is that? Okay. Hmm. What do you think happened? I do love Thrivey's design because he's a tiny little white dragon who's a doctor. And when he like first comes in, everybody's like, oh, why is this child in here? And he just starts cursing them out because he's so mad. He's like, I'm not a child, please. I'm a doctor. What do you think happened? Well, if you'd like me to guess, hmm. The murderer poisoned Heron and struck him on the back of the head when he tried to call for help. Okay. A cup. Hmm. There's something strange about Vincel's door. Maybe the murderer had stayed in his room. Maybe they also left something on the windowsill. Okay, geez. Tell me the direct thing to do. Thank you. I will check the windowsill. The window in Vincel's room is open. Snow piled up on the windowsill. Was this also set up to confuse us? Thrivey's medicine case seems to be closer to his bed than usual. Is there anything in his bed? Okay. Yeah, I have to keep going back to the case to get more hints, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> That's true, I haven't searched up here yet. Thrivey's medicine chest, impressively cumbersome. I opened the chest, there's a lot of drugs in it. Laxative, antidiarrheals, sleeping pills. Thrivey's weird book with a fuzzy image of a dragon and, and weird symbols which I can barely understand on its cover. It's almost dry after being soaked inside her last night. I wanna check this. Sergeant key holder keeps the keys to the empty rooms here. But only Sergeant has the cellar key and it's on the keychain. I checked the keys. They belong to Kane, Sean, Peter, Vincel, and Ionis. Okay. Uh, that should be it. 
The ladder dragged by a, ro a rope can now m can move along the rails. Okay. Something that tells me that there's also a chance that Thrivey himself has done this. Uh, mostly because they set up a little scene where Thrivey earlier... Thrivey used to have problems pulling down the ladder, but there was a scene earlier where, where Thrivey just pulled down the ladder by himself without any issues. And uh, Sarzen earlier said that the, that the ladder makes noise now um, after it fell on Anzox, but uh, when Thrivey pulled down the ladder, it didn't make any noise at all. Okay, uh, talk. No, search again. Then hit back. Did I not? Oh, I have to check his bed. Ooh. Search bed. Thrivey's bed. It was one of Sarzen's beds. Something, something heavy was here and left a remarkable impression. Okay. I think that's it. Oh, yeah, there you go, sniff. I took a deep breath through my nostrils trying to sniff out the murderer. Though it doesn't work all the time, saves me a lot of trouble. The sound of blood is too strong. I can't connect the sense with these people. Might as well pay, pay more attention to the sense. I close my eyes and breathe in, breathe in and out slowly. Okay, so these are all... Hmm... Different races and things, blah, 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 blah. The more similar interaction methods, the more similar the smell. Okay. Heron's mug smells like cider. Apart from Heron's, I don't smell anyone else. The menu smells like blood and paper. Apart from Heron and Sarzin's, no one, no one else's scent could be detected. Interesting. Heron just smells like the surroundings. He wasn't moved by the others. Hmm. Mug smell like cider and Heron. Something is off. Heron's mug. The mug in Heron's hand should be the poisoned one, but it smells just like the other mugs. Though the truth is not always welcome, it's time to find out what happened. Yeah, I think it was Thrivey. Oh, my pronoun it my pronouns are he they or you can whatever. I don't particularly care, but he they are my common pronouns. Oh no, it shows like the, the like it does the Dungan Rumpa thing where the dead characters have like blood covering their portraits that's so sad we're gonna save <sighs> after a thorough search i asked everyone to come to the hall for trial anzok sat in the chair with his tail wrapped around the chair leg like a python solar was whispering something to elegant her mouth hidden by a handkerchief <laughs> the red one is uh is anzox he's the he's the bard Yes, he has very nice arms in all of the art. He has like art in like three or four different styles and all of them he has very nice arms. <laughs> He's not even the buff one. Uh, Sergeant is the buff one. And Ionis, but Ionis is dead already. You should you should have seen the, the shark character. The shark character was my favorite and I loved him and he died and I'm so upset that he died. <laughs> Uh, Solar was whispering something to Elegant, her mouth hidden by a handkerchief. Thrivey stood by the counter, staring at the rag in Sarzen's hand. Let's go through this. Was Heron's death murder or accidental? I don't think anyone here murdered him. So you believe this was an accident? No, I believe he was killed by a ghost. An old friend of mine told me that if someone died with strong resentment, they would linger on in this world as a spirit until they get what they want. Since Vincel failed to kill Heron while he was still alive, his ghost returned to take vengeance. Let's make something clear. Usually we don't take ghosts into consideration if we still have living people as suspects. If you need to choose someone to question, then I choose Anzox. Why? Well, according to the autopsy, Heron was poisoned with a large dose of belladonna. In high doses, belladonna poison causes pupil dilation and asphyxiation. But in small doses, it makes bards meet with, meet with their muses in happy dreams, where they are blessed with inspiration. Uh, but... And you do have a half-full half full bottle of Belladonna Potion with you, right? I, I drank it myself! Can you prove it? I... 
But Heron is a priest. He wouldn't drink this much when he's on a mission, right? <laughs> Are you sure? Almost everyone here knows that Heron would never refuse a chance to have a drink. Please don't speak ill of the dead. Sorry, but we really don't have room for nice, nice uh, niceties here. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe Vincel's ghost did kill Heron. I didn't expect you to say that, Doctor. Well, anyway, let's figure out who had the chance to kill Heron last night. We got two suspects this time. Uh, it's Anzox. One of them is Anzox. He went upstairs after me. It is possible. And another one is... The other one is, strangely enough, Solar, because she was also down here, according to your testimony. But I don't really want to accuse her. One of them is Solar. So we assume the murder is either Anzox or Solar for now, both of whom went upstairs after Sarzen. I demand to state my testimony to prove my innocence. Actually, technically speaking, you're still a noble. There's no need to be so nervous. Uh, that's, that's right, but I won't admit something I didn't do. Then state your testimony, please. I didn't want to go back to my room early last night, so I stayed in the hall and to listen to Anzox play his lute. At first it was clear and sweet as a lullaby, but soon he started speeding the, the rhythm up and the tune went pretty strange. I was a bit disturbed by the tune, so I went upstairs to go to bed. Uh, when I went upstairs, Anzox was still there with Heron. So I was not the last one who saw Heron alive. Something smells fishy. Maybe I'll press harder for further information. What should I ask? Hmm. Uh, refuse to return to your room? Why didn't you want to go back to your room earlier? I didn't want to be alone, let alone going back to a room that was filled with his scent. I couldn't smell any remaining traces of blue neek, but who am I to judge? What should I ask? You were disturbed by Anzok's music? Yes, and I don't know why. It was like he lost his mind. It was like, like an evil spirit was urging his fingers to play that melody. I think we could leave out the whole evil spirit thing. Oops, I'm sorry. What should I ask? Anzox and Heron. So Anzox and Heron were the last two people downstairs? Yes. Uh, last witness. Then Anzox was the last one who saw Heron alive. I think so. Uh, please add what you said to your testimony and repeat it. <laughs> I didn't want to be alone in my room last night, so I stayed in the hall to listen to Anzox's loot practice. Anzox's tune was full of rage. I was disturbed, so I went upstairs. When I got upstairs, Anzox was still there with Heron. In other words, Anzox was the last person to see Heron when he was still alive. Hold on. Hold it. What? Your testimony obviously implicates Anzox. You basically just told us Anzox is guilty in a roundabout way. It makes me curious. If you're so certain that Anzox is guilty, why did you say this? Uh, Silla's testimony makes Anzox look suspicious, but her thought earlier was... The ghost, which was... Is that her own testimony? Yeah. Solar said that Vincel's ghost killed Heron last night. But now her testimony makes Anzox to be the most suspicious one. The reason might be... Um, why did Solar testify against Anzox while she insisted that Vincel's ghost committed the crime? Or did you want to blame the ghost for your, for your murder, then change the target to Anzox when you failed? None of that. I just want to... I just want Anzok to prove my innocence. If Anzok confirms your statement, then you're innocent, but also turns him into the only suspect. I guess it's my turn now. Yes, please state your testimony. Last night I played the, my loot for a while until I got tired and went back to my room. Heron was still alive then. I used up that half-bottle belladonna juice. It was definitely not suitable for poisoning. Also, there's a wound on the back of Heron's head, isn't there? I don't have a proper weapon that can leave such a wound. Regardless, I didn't poison Heron, and I had no reason to do so. Something smells fishy. Maybe I'll press harder for information. Where should I ask? About the weapon. You actually always carry something that you could hit someone with. Uh, loot. As a matter of fact, the paint on the backside of your loot has come off. It makes sense if it come off when you hit someone with it. Th that was an accident, <laughs> damn railing. I would never use my beautiful loot in such an awful way. Then what would you use? But I swear I drink I drank that belladonna juice. No rush, I'm going to explain that part. Should I ask? What you last saw. What was Heron doing when you went back to your room? Was he drunk? He was praying while counting his beads on his rosary, and he wasn't drunk. 
What should I ask? Could you explain where the rest of the belladonna went? I've used that bottle, bottle of belladonna juice a dozen times each time I dropped one or two drops in my cider and drank it. It's really quite expensive, and I'm not so wasteful as to use half of the bottle to poison someone. Mm, but there's one, piece of, there's one piece of evidence that contradicts your statement. Um, well, he likely died of belladonna poisoning. I guess it's autopsy? No matter what you said, the way Heron died is certain. He was poisoned with belladonna, and in the entire tavern, you are the only one with a belladonna potion. As some, and someone would be poisoned if they consumed belladonna in excess. This seems a bit different from, from it being not suitable for poisoning. In short, the problem with belladonna cannot be solved at the moment. We can only assume that it was added to Hiren's cider by someone. If we do, Hiren's death could be explained easily. It's because of the poisoning effect of the potion. This is a serious accusation. You added the belladonna juice to Heron's cider and invited him to drink with you. You were trying to poison him. However, because the poison doesn't kill instantly, Heron must have tried calling out for help, right? That's when you hit him on the back of the head with your loot, accelerating his death with both poisoning and brain damage. But, but I definitely didn't kill him. Surely there must be some way to prove that there's no belladonna juice in that cider, right? I don't want to believe it, but we really can't prove that the cider... Wait, I can prove it. Anzox impulsively dropped his loot and strode to the bar counter. He pushed Thrivey, who had been squatting, squatted down beside Heron's body, aside before grabbing the mug and downing its content with, with single gulp. This is... Oops. This is weirdly not great art. <laughs> his eyes are too close together. <laughs> and thus, I shall prove my words to be true. Anzox, completely unshaken by what, what may have been an act of suicide, slammed his mug down like every time he finished his drink. Are you out of your goddamn mind? You might have just you may have just killed yourself, you giant red idiot. If I'm guilty, that saves the trouble of, then it saves you the trouble of hanging me. He wiped the cider remains on the corner of his mouth with his hand and smirked, waiting for that certain moment to come. But let it not be said that I died without fanfare. The corner, of, oh my God. the corner of Sarzen's mouth twitched slightly, and Zox, meanwhile, leaned on the bar counter. I expectant silence swallowed the room as we waited. I... I don't appear to be dying. And here I had my hopes up for nothing. <laughs> I it. What? I meant your innocent has not been yet proven. Well, I... You're... I just drank a whole glass of that stupid poison cider. Did you drink the rest of the cider as well? Aside from that, there is still one possible explanation. Remember how you survived from the ladder blow? The ladder on the second floor would have killed anyone else. It clearly shows that dragons are harder to get fatally injured. It may be possible that you accurately formulated a dose of belladonna juice that would be fatal to Heron, but not to you. That's nonsense. If half of my bottle of belladonna juice is in that cider, I would have been ten times the regular dose I use for myself. I don't even feel dizzy. And I know that I know and I know very well that I'm not missing any more than half the bottle. Strange, the autopsy shows that Heron died from poisoning. How did Heron die from poison even though there's no belladonna juice in the cider? I'm gonna say he was either poisoned by well no, his his eyes are dilated, so he's probably poisoned, so poisoned by other methods. Heron must have been poisoned with the belladonna in some other way. But it only works if you drink it. Oh, okay, so autopsy went wrong. If Anzox proved that there's no poison in the cider and there's no other way to poison Heron with it, I should reconsider the facts. Doctor, don't take this as a critique of your professional skills, but... Can you be 100% that Heron died from poisoning? Well, because right now it seems like the real cause... What was the reason for Heron's death? Yeah, so it would be the knock on the head. It wasn't poison at all. It's more likely Heron died from the blunt injury to the back of his head. So it wasn't poison. Then the autopsy must have been mistaken. And you had the nerve to suspect me? Does our bond as roommate mean, mean nothing to you, Thrivey? Wait, please. I didn't mean any of this. I, I want to testify. Fine by me. I may have made a mistake in the autopsy report. However, the how of Heron's death doesn't make a difference in this case. The time of Heron's death hasn't changed either. In brief, I believe that Heron was killed by Vincel's ghost. Something sm smells fishy. Maybe I'll press harder for information. 
What should I ask? Uh, what's the real cause of death? What's the real cause of Heron's death? The blunt injury to the back of the head. Then why did you get it wrong? Because I'd forget, forgotten that I could, that it could also cause respiratory arrest. Sorry about the mistake. It's okay. You've been a great help so far. What should I ask? Why would you believe that the cause of death doesn't act, doesn't affect the final result? Because no matter how, it it's caused by a ghost. Okay. Time of death? Eight hours ago. About an hour before Sergeant went upstairs. Whoa. Whoa. An hour before Sergeant went upstairs? Okay. What makes you think well, what makes you think that a ghost killed him? I think that it's the truth this whole time. Is it that you're trying to cover for someone? Okay. Please reorganize your testimony and add it in what you just mentioned. Okay. Please testify again. The true cause of Heron's death is a blunt injury to the back of the, the head that caused him to stop breathing. How, however, the how of Heron's death doesn't make a difference in this case. The time of death is eight hours ago. I'm sure of it. In brief, I believe that Heron was killed by Vincel's ghost. Thrive, I know you're... I know you don't believe it. one of us is the murderer, and you want to cover up for him. But you'll have to hard try harder to trick me. Wait. I know you don't believe one of us is the murderer, and you want to cover up for him. That sentence is not correct, but okay. Wait, what are you trying to say? I'm pretty sure falsifying an autopsy and lying during testimony violates your professional ethics. I think you know her th who the murderer is. Why not just tell us? I lied in my testimony because I don't want to see anyone else die. It was just a slip of the tongue when I said that the cause of death doesn't matter. The time of death is eight hours ago, that's for sure. I didn't expect anyone here to have Belladonna juice, of all the blasted luck. Hey? Hold it. Sorry. Of course people would think it's mine because you already said so. I wouldn't believe it at first as well, sorry. But I really didn't kill him. Wait, I believe something is wrong. Like what? Why would Anzox do- what would Anzox do if he really was the murderer? Uh... Would he pin it on Vincel's ghost? He'll try to persuade people that Vincel's ghost attacked Heron. Right. And there were two people who have done this. It was Solar and one of them is Solar. She might have said that. Is there anyone else? Thrivey. One of them is Thrivey. Both Solar and Thrivey have mentioned that. However, Anzox never talked about a ghost. If Anzox was the murderer and opened the window in Vincel's room trying to convince us that his ghost came back for revenge, but then he never said a thing about the ghost, doesn't that seem strange? Now it seems Thrivey is more suspicious. First changing the results of the autopsy, then mentioning the ghost. And I have yet to figure out why you emphasize the time of death so many times. The time of death. The time of death is eight hours ago. That's for sure. The time of death is eight hours ago. I'm sure of it. Eight hours ago. An hour before Sarzan went upstairs. What if Heron actually died later than we know? Like... After Anzox went upstairs. Is there, like, is any chance that Heron got killed after Anzox went upstairs? Nonsense! Anzox went upstairs very late, la late at night, definitely not after that. How did you... I could hear you climbing up into the attic. You're not exactly graceful. I thought I was quiet. When you went upstairs, did you see Thrivey in his bed? Of course. I need more details. I went back to the attic at about 1 o'clock last night. Everybody was asleep, so I climbed up the ladder quietly. After I climbed upstairs, I saw Thrivey and Sarzan lying in their beds. The candle in the attic had gone out, so I felt way over so I felt my way over to my bed and fell asleep. I was completely silent. Something smells fishy. Maybe I'll have to press harder for information. What should I ask? I made no noise. So he didn't make any sound. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Except for when I climbed into the bed, I think I creaked. I think it creaked a bit. My bed. Were they both in, on bed? Yes. You said it was pretty dark. Both of their quilts were plumped up, and I could hear Sergeant snoring. 
Well, what should I ask? How was Heron doing when you went upstairs? I told you he was praying and wasn't drunk. Oh, I think it was Thrivey. Thrivey could could have been hiding in uh in what's his name's room. Um in Vincel's room. Uh he probably when he went upstairs after his book got wet, he probably could have Don't forget to stay hydrated. Alright, Google geez. <laughs> when he went upstairs when his book got wet, he probably took the extra key uh and went into uh Vincel's room. And then lo uh, unlocked it, went inside, and then unlocked, and then locked it again, so that when uh... no, he did come back down, didn't he? I don't remember. But yeah, he probably put his briefcase in his own bed to make it look like he was in bed, uh, and then he hid he hid in Vincel's room using the spare key um, that that uh, Sergeant usually has upstairs. And when Sergeant came by, the door was already locked, so he didn't check inside it. Um, and then after he heard Anzox come upstairs, after he heard him bring down the ladder, he probably went down, killed Heron, probably with the, with his own book, uh, and then went back upstairs. And because we know that he can bring down the ladder and barely make a sound, then the other two probably didn't hear him come upstairs. And Sarsen was tired, so he probably didn't hear anything. Please reorganize your testimony and repeat it. Yes. Testimony again. I went back to the attic about at about one o'clock last night. Heron was counting beads on his rosary and he wasn't drunk. Everybody was asleep, so I climbed up the ladder quietly. It was pretty dark in the attic. I saw both Thrivey and Sergeant lying on their beds, and their quilts were plumped up. I was sneaky the whole time, trying not to disturb anyone, except for a creak when I climbed onto the bed. Wait. Oh, wait, that's it. Hold it. What? I got it. What you saw wasn't Thrivey sleeping, but... What was this thing? It was... Yep, that's exactly what I was just thinking. Uh, Thrivey's bed. Medicine case. There you go. What you saw wasn't Thrivey, but his medicine chest tucked under the quilt. There was visible indentation on Thrivey's bed today. Guess we've got an explanation for that. In other words, when Anzox went upstairs, Thrivey wasn't in bed. Then where would he have been at the moment? Vincel's room. In Vincel's room. Thrivey was in Vincel's room when Anzox went upstairs last night. He waited until Anzox went upstairs and then went downstairs to kill Heron. It isn't like that. <laughs> I love the little sad Roman. <laughs> I checked every door bef every door lock before I went to sleep, even the rooms that were empty. I can make sure that Vincel's room was locked. I doubt that. What? Now it seems your testimony has flaws. When I went upstairs last night, there were so there were still some people downstairs. Then I pushed every door on the second floor, making sure they were locked properly. I went to sleep after that. Plus the flaw in Sergeant's testimony. Sergeant's pushed doors to check. Sergeant made sure doors were locked. Uh, yeah. The problem is, did you really check that properly? What do you mean? When you said that you checked all the locks, what you really did was push each door and turn the doorknob, right? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If the if the door doesn't move when you push it, and the eh, pushed it doesn't it, it doesn't open when you turn the knob, then it's a locked door. Isn't that obvious? Let me put it this way: you didn't use a key to check if they were locked, right? True, but it didn't seem necessary. Yeah, this case really does seem like everybody was in on it because everybody kind of did want Heron dead, including me. <laughs> Not me as the character, but me as the player. Heron walked in on day one and I was like, boy, I hope you die. <laughs> I think the murderer could easily muddle through this level of security check. How did this, how did the murderer pass Sergeant's check? Uh, hold the door knob from inside. Push the door from the inside. Yes. The murderer pushed against the door from the inside of the room, so it won't open when Sarsen pushed it from the inside. But I also turned the doorknob. The doorknob should have moved if the murderer was pushing against the door. Touché. Which means they held the doorknob from the inside. Simple enough. The murderer held the doorknob from the inside. All the murderer had to do was hold the doorknob, and then nobody would know if the door was locked or not. That way the murderer could hide in the cell's room and wait until everybody was in their rooms, then go downstairs to kill Heron. Therefore, we, we know at the time of Heron's death, 
the truth behind Vincel's supposedly locked door and how the murderer killed Heron after Anzox went upstairs. <laughs> What's really funny, now that it, thinking back about it a little bit, is that we didn't like stop Anzox when he was like, oh, we saw the, I saw like that they were in bed. He, we stopped Anzox when Anzox was like, oh, and my bed creaked. <laughs> and so we had like a little bit of fridge logic there. I think that's really funny. Time to sort things out. Fast Q and A. Oh, okay. So we just decided already. Uh, the weapon. Wait, we don't know what the weapon is. The weapon which killed Heron is. What was the weapon? The only thing I could think of is the Kybalion. It's this thick book. It's Thrivey's book. My book may be thick, but it's too expensive to hit people with. And besides, have you not noticed that there's no impact marks on my book? True. A book can be lethal, but if you add another thing to it, then you could use a weapon to it. Then you can use it as a weapon without leaving any marks on it. What turned the book into a weapon? Oh! It was wet with cider, so it would be heavier. The trick is the cider you spilled on your book. The book was totally soaked by the cider, both the pages and the cover. Usually a soaked book would be harmless, but the weather was the key, uh, was the key ingredient. If you put the soaked book outside the window, it would be hard as a rock in a matter of hours. Oh, that makes sense. That's why his window was open. I forgot that the window was open. With an ice-covered frozen book, even, the victim bled, even if the victim bled on it, it'd be easy to clean off. There, would be, there wouldn't be any trace of damage to the book's cover. You just needed to unfreeze it inside your room after you use it. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, here's how things played out. Okay, let's do the thing that I'm bad at. Though I've, I've gotten a first try at the last two cases, so. Um, suspect held the door not uh, tightly. That did happen. Suspect waited in the attic so everyone's gone. That did not. Suspect knocked over the cup and soaked, soaked the book. Uh, that was before he held, he waited. Before he held the doorknob, yes. Suspect put the book outside in Sal's room. That probably happened after that, but before he held the doorknob. Suspect drugged Heron Cider. No. Suspect went downstairs to kill Heron with the book. Yeah, that's after he held the doorknob. Suspect opened the door to Vincel's room. Okay. Like that. Three of the chips are in position. Okay, I did something wrong. Four, put the book up. Oh, he had to go inside the room first. <laughs> Whoops. This is a sequence of events. Okay. Suspect. Well, the murderer is Thrivey. But why? Why did Thrivey kill him? Thrivey murdered Heron. You, you know my height, right? Besides, why would I kill him? Your height won't affect your plan, and next I'll talk about the motive. I love it when she makes this face, it's so dumb. <laughs> About the motivation, I've got a guess. In my opinion, the problem is... I... I'm going to prove that no matter what I was before, I've changed. That I now walk the right path under the guidance of God. Thank you. I know that it's not exactly easy. I was intending to be the Watchman, but I'm afraid at this point I'd fall asleep. Thanks. I hope you can all trust me, for although I was tempted by the devil a long time ago, I have rid myself of sin with God's guidance. Oops. What was Thrivey's motive for killing, killing Heron? Uh, free from sin, I guess? If I didn't get it wrong, you overturned the cup after Heron said he was free from his sin. Um, maybe? I can't remember clearly. I guess you didn't agree with what he said. Further on, per he perhaps heard you before. Heron was sent to a monastery by his, pa by his parents in his teens, so you started a feud with him before that. What could a teenager do to make someone hold a grudge for a lifetime? Stop. Huh? You... You know nothing about me! Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to ex exculpate Heron, I'm just thinking. Bullying, right? Stop! Shut up! Looks like I'm right. To summarize, case briefing. Heron volunteered to Heron volunteered to be the night watcher last night, claiming to have moved past his simple history. 
Maybe you'd forgotten about him, or forgive him, but his announcement probably made you furious. So, either as part of your scheme or sheer indignant rage, you overturned a mug full of cider and soaked your book. Vincel had committed suicide yesterday because he had accidentally killed Peter. Killing Heron and blaming it on Vincel's ghost would have been quite convincing, but you needed help. You needed to help it along. You took your book upstairs, climbed up to the attic, stole the key to Vincel's room from the key holder, then opened the door, put the book outside. You put the book outside and waited until it was frozen. At that point, so at that point, Sergeant hadn't gone upstairs, so you put the key back in place. Uh, stuffed your medicine chest under the sheets. Do I have to keep burping? Then blew out the candle so it looked like you were asleep. Sarzin, being exhausted, wouldn't think to check. After finishing your preparations, you went back to Vincel's room and waited until all of us were in our rooms. When Sarzin came came to check the doors, you held the doorknob from the from the inside to mislead him into thinking that the door was locked. Once he was done, you came out from Vincel's room and left the window open. Then you went downstairs with the frozen book to confront Heron. It was midnight, and Heron was probably dead drunk, lying on the table. But you decided to make him actually dead when you hit him on the back of the head with the hard frozen book. Then you cleaned the, the blood stain off your book, made sure Heron was dead, then went upstairs, moved your medicine chest out of your bed, and went to sleep with nobody the wiser. Then, when Sergeant came to ask you about the, for the autopsy, you suddenly remembered that Anzox drank cider with belladonna juice, and Heron's death resembled belladonna poisoning. So you decided to pin the blame on Anzox. That should sum everything up nicely. I couldn't even make the slightest guess about what Heron did to make you hate him so much. But while I can understand how much you want revenge... But still, first do no harm, right? I don't want to say that, but yeah. It's fine. I accomplished what I wanted to do. Dying with satisfaction after delivering my revenge? It's probably the best ending I could have hoped for. I wanted to fight back ever since I was young, yet I didn't have the strength to do so at the time. Then he went to the monastery and I thought I'd never meet him again. Until four days ago and when he stumbled into this tavern, it was like he'd just stepped out of my memories fully formed. Surely he'd successfully convinced everyone that he was reformed, a proper member of the clergy, even if I was almost convinced. But after last night, I knew. I knew he hadn't changed, and he never would. Well, I'd better get going. Thank you for taking care of me these past few days. Wait, where are you going? Thrive wrapped his coat tight and lifted his medicine chest. I know where people like me should go. I'll go there alone. No need to help. There's a blizzard outside. You'll... Sergeant moved, the block, moved to block the door, but he was a bit too slow. Thrivey opened the door and walked out to the blizzard without hesitating or looking back. He walked slowly, dragging his medicine chest, marching through the knee-high snow. Snow blew in from the tavern's door, melting against my muzzle as I squinted. Thrivey's figure in the blizzard grew smaller and smaller, more and more blurred, until at last he disappeared into the endless white. His body was found by some street sweepers after the blizzard finally ended. He had collapsed, collapsed from hypothermia. His frostbitten his frost paws tightly clutching his belt of his medicine chest, his fluffy white fur coated with a thick layer of snow. People showed great respect to the young doctor who insisted on fulfilling his duty even after, even during a deadly blizzard. I've heard that Rymph Diocese is raising funds to build a bronze statue in his honor. Everything changed after the snow stopped. I went to the judiciary with Sarzen, we spent a few days testifying, then I went back to my office. When I climbed up the stairs to my office, I froze at I froze at the door what I, I froze at the door at what I saw. Not expecting any visitors, I see. How did you find my office? I am a professional, Roman. Besides, where else would you wait where else would I wait for you so so you could fulfill your promise? At least wait until I earn some money. No, oh, at least wait until I earn some money. Oh, I fear your money troubles are over for a while. After solving the White Star Cavern, Tavern case, there will be tons of clients ready to commission you, it's a Detective Roman. Meanwhile, I nobly sacrificed my financial future to save you from a certain... Alright, alright, I get it. Don't worry, I'll make sure to pay you back. <laughs> then perhaps I should stay here? I should stay here a while? Uh, stay here while I wait for that payment? Just to keep an eye on you, you know? Well, only if you don't mind the mess. However, the public was more interested in the 12 people in the White Star Tavern killing each other. Wait. 13 people. There was 13 people there. Okay. 
Though if they knew the number of patrons was 13, the story would have been more ominous. Oh, okay. The White Star Tavern be became unbelievably popular after the incident. Wait, why did people... Oh, because he walked out. So I guess we didn't blame it on him? What, what did we... Okay. The White Star Tavern became unbelievably popular after the incident. Some came to visit the famous homicide scene or spend a night in one of the one of these rooms. Though un unwilling, Sarzan still rents the rooms to those lodgers in exchange for a tripled room fee. Oh my god. His only request is that all lodgers must leave a white flower on the nightstand before leaving the room. Anzox was asked, was asked to stay at the White Star permanently to help Sarzan deal with the guests. Not entering the kitchen, though. His unfinished story rem remains unfinished, mostly because he is now busy with telling the guests what happened during that Christmas. Sometimes he also tells the guests about me, I assume. Some of my clients claim that they came from they came because they heard my name from the best bard in Rimp. As for Solar, on the day the snow stopped, she bought Elegant's clothing. Wait. On the day the snow stopped, she bought Elegant's clothing and rushed out of the tavern. I'd never seen her since. Maybe she went back to Cordoba, out of the out of the range of Apollyon's law. My friends my friends Cain, Ionis, and Peter will, were left in that snowy Christmas forever. I won't be able to taste Cain's carrot stew ever again, even though I never really liked it. Ionis won't clap me on the shoulder either. Sometimes I wonder what what would have happened if he told me about his sexual orientation. I'd never be his lover, of course, but I I could at least listen. Okay, that's a weird way to write that, but I guess this is the 1200s. I never got the chance to write Peter's to write Peter's letter, but even if I did, I wouldn't sell sell it to Hella. If she had seen the letter, she would have shed, would she have shed a tear for Peter? Although I had to admit, since that incident, my detective agency has become quite famous. With so many cases, I got too busy to sleep, even with Elegant's help. But I still wish that I could have prevented that incident from the start. If only I could go back to the tavern, back to that Christmas Eve. Maybe, just maybe, I could have saved them. Even if it means I will remain a nobody. Unfortunately, time can't be reversed. Time to get up. Oh, well, that was... That was a nice game. I kind of wonder what would have happened if I would have picked the other, the other like choice. It probably would have still made me investigate, honestly. That was that was nice. I'm glad I got it. I got it on sale. I'm glad I learned about it from Game Grumps of all people. <laughs> uh, how did? Okay, so first, um. The angry guy accidentally scared someone into killing him, um, because he had he had like a reason to be angry at the other guy, but he accidentally scared him too much and he killed killed him. Then that guy killed himself uh, because he couldn't deal with it. Uh, and then who died after that? Uh, oh, and then Anzox got hit in the head with the with the ladder, but he didn't die luckily. Uh, but then we tied up Vincel in the basement because he was the one who did it. Um, then Ionis slept with the the Marquis, which was Solar's husband. Um, and in order to not get blackmailed, in order to like prevent himself from from even the idea of being blackmailed, he killed Ionis. Um, and then his wife killed him out of like shock. Uh, but she couldn't get get punished because she's a noble. And then... Who died after that? Oh, and then Peter died because Vincel escaped his the ropes. Uh, and he tried to kill Heron, who he was trying to kill the whole time. Oh. Wait, I got a question mark end? Interesting. Restart? That's a new button. Whoa! Whoa! Wait, does this game continue? I'm gonna- I'm gonna hit the button. I- I'm not planning on going too far into this, but I need to figure out what's going on here. Hold on. Hold on. There's bad endings. I don't think there's multiple endings per se, but I haven't really checked the other thing. I haven't slept so deeply in a long time. I haven't slept well ever since that Christmas. Partly because I get so many clients coming to me these days, and partly because I always remember those days when I was at the White Star Tavern. 